Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pittaway. Today on the show I'm going to do a tutorial explaining to you how to get the best from your night sight equipment. Now the two cameras I've got are the NS200 here and the NS50. One of them's rated to 200 yards while the other one's rated up to 50 yards. Uh, the only thing different in actual a night sight box when you buy a unit is the camera modules itself. The LCD screens and the IR illuminators, the battery and the cables are all the same. So the only difference is the actual camera modules itself. Now after using these for probably around about six to eight weeks now with David on all different locations and in different situations, uh, we've had some fantastic results. And I know that the NS50 sees a lot further than 50 yards and the NS200 sees further than 200 yards as well. If you do a few tips what I'm going to pass on to you now to gain the most from your unit. The rifle I will be, will be using is my HW100 uh, and the scope is a Hawk Sidewinder 3 to 12 by 50 with the IR and the side parallax. So stay tuned and we'll take you through right from scratch uh, to help you improve your sight and your range with the unit. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at then is the camera module itself. And this one here, if I move it to my camera, you'll see it's the NS50. Now, inside the NS50, you can actually see the camera lens itself, uh, which is just there. Uh, when these come, uh, they're set uh, at factory setting, which I should imagine uh, is some sort of like standard setting what night sight produce. Now, that doesn't mean it's actually uh, correctly in focus uh, and they need to be focused so the first thing you should do really is once you plug this in uh, is to turn it on look through the screen uh, and then adjust this little lens now you can do that by putting your finger in here and twisting it like this left and right uh, and as you're twisting it move your hand away look at the screen twist it again look at the screen until you get a pin uh, sharp picture actually through your LCD screen. Now you do this obviously before you even put it on the scope and ideally it's to do it at range so you get an infinite, uh, an in infinitive uh, sort of like focus. We're going to do that now uh, and I'm going to use my workbench uh, and a couple of other cameras to assist me in showing you uh, how the focus works. Right, what you can see I've done here is if I come around uh, with my standard quality uh, Sony Handycam, uh, I've bolted both the LCD screen and the illuminator which is not turned on the illuminator just the camera is at the moment uh, and the NS50 to the Black & Decker Workmate and behind it I've got my Sony Handycam I purposefully now made the actual screen unfocused uh, by twisting the lens inside and what I intend to do now uh, is zoom in slowly with the handycam starting to lose light uh, and you can see the pictures out of focus completely what I'm going to do now then is adjust the actual picture uh, on the on the camera So I'm sticking my fingers in and you can see I'm moving out. Again, sticking my fingers in and twisting, uh, it's starting to come into focus. Sticking it in again, twisting again, starting to get really nicely focused. A bit more. And I'm looking down there uh, at the church, which is at uh, 57 meters. Now uh, this is from my front porch. Final little tweak. And hopefully you can now see the picture especially in this screen it's got no lines whatsoever it is really clear clear and it looks like a back, black and white photo actually on the actual screen itself really really clear so what I've done there then is uh, improved the picture quality straight away and the focus before I even put it on the gun and that's something uh, what you really need to do uh, as soon as you get this unit that's the first tip Thank you. 
Right, I'm going to uh, turn this little handycam on to a night shot now because it is starting to get uh, quite dark outside and as you'll notice in a minute my uh, outside light will be flashing on and off uh, and the, the actual main camera, uh, the one I'm pointing to now, uh, is not a night shot as I've already said, it's HD but not night shot. Uh, the second tip then, I'm going to press record now, the second tip is on the rifle itself uh, and it's to get the actual crosshairs uh, in focus before you even actually put the uh, the camera on the back. Now if you've got a scope like this uh, Hawk Sidewinder, you've got this lens at the back. I can't remember the exact name, I think it might be called an ocular lens, but uh, don't quote me on that, I might be totally wrong. Uh, and what happens is, if you was to loosen this off, this one's quite stiff, one, one second, it's stiff because it's it's set correct for me. There we go. It's got a ring, and you see I'm just undoing, the, undoing this ring. What it allows you to do then is to turn the end or this lens on the scope. And as you turn this, and if, if you're actually looking through the scope, you'll see the crosshairs will come in of, into focus uh, and out of focus a lot sharper. So you get into a position, uh, and the rifle's not loaded, it's not even got a magazine in. Uh, where if I'm looking through I can then twist this lens to bring the crosshairs really in focus. Once it's in focus like it is now I can then do up the ring like so uh, and keep it there and it'll be locked in place there. So that's two things we've done firstly we've uh, focused the camera and secondly uh, we've put the lens at the back of the scope in the correct position to focus the crosshairs sharply uh, and really nicely uh, clearly so when you look through you can see the crosshair clearly. Right, as you can see now I'm having to use a standard Sony Handycam with a night shot because uh, it's too dark outside for my HD camera in day mode and I'm using the outside light. Now the next tip what I'm going to give uh, is in regards to this scope sleeve. Now you get two of these uh, Ola rubber scope, scoped sleeves when you buy the night sight kit. Uh, one's to fit a 30mm scope uh, and one's to obviously fit a smaller diameter scope. Inside, I'm going to try and come in without losing focus, you can see there's a ring inside there. That ring uh, is actually designed, and I spoke to Phil at night sight today, to go on the back of the scope uh, and to obviously fit snugly with the scope so it keeps the actual rubber sleeve level but it's only there also as a guide so you don't push it on too far because these cameras uh, and these uh, sleeves work to an eye relief per scope now each scope might be slightly different and this is a problem what I think some people might be getting when they're using the night sights uh, to get uh, and they're losing distance uh, and clarity now what I can tell you is with this with the two units I've got, if I was to shove that onto the back of my HW100 now till it meets the rubber stop and then put an NS200 camera uh, like this one here basically onto the back and push it all the way in like that I will get a really clear picture really clear uh, and I can see I know uh, way over 200 yards I would dare say that now without even uh, putting you and showing you on test because I've been out with Davey and we, we've seen that and we've been on Google Earth and we know that's the fact. However, what I have noticed with the other camera which is behind me in a minute and I'll show you, uh, the NS50, if I was to do the same with the NS50, push it all the way on, then I only get, instead of having a, a square screen and a full picture with a circle in the middle, all I get is a tiny, tiny circle and it's all lazy around the edges uh, and it does reduce the actual distance uh, and the actual picture quality probably down to 30 yards maximum using the NS50 uh, and I noticed this yesterday before I went out and uh, filmed the actual test uh, itself you know the comparison test if you've seen that now the way I got around this uh, and it was a simple uh, thing to actually fix it and as you saw yesterday if you watched the test it absolutely boosted the actual clarity and the brightness was to instead of pushing it in all the way like this is to move the NS50 and this is camera and obviously 
tube plus your scope uh, depicted right, is to pull it back like so and I'll notice when I pulled it back so it's on really stiff uh, so if I did have a, a rifle like a spring with a bit of recoil it's not going to shoot off the back but that uh, went from a really small like I say picture all hazy just by pulling it back to that to an absolute fantastic crystal full picture nice and tight around the edges and that was on times seven magnification uh, if I'd have turned that down to three in this position it'd have been even brighter now I've had comments today on the channel people saying yeah but you're shining it on a horse box and IR light reflects better uh, so the reason I'm actually waiting now till it gets really dark uh, is people who've seen my other clips before know that there's a church at the bottom of my garden it's 57 meters from the window uh, to be honest we're probably two meters in front now uh, so for around about 55 meters so 61 yards I'm gonna uh, show you this experiment with the NS50 like that and then like that at 61 yards uh, and it's something the church is brick wall it's not going to reflect the IR uh, like the horse box did and I still know now I can guarantee that we're going to get a nice picture so we'll wait a bit longer and then I'll show you uh, how I'm going to do it right for this part of the tutorial then I've now fitted the NS50 camera module to the back of my Hawk Sidewinder scope uh, and the rifle itself is secured in, in the uh, Black & Decker Workmate uh, and the rifle is not loaded, there's no magazine in and it's pointed uh, and put in a position where it's looking uh, down my garden uh, to the church at around about 55 metres from our location Right, what you're looking at now uh, is an out of focus uh, both for crosshairs and picture at a church at like I say 55 metres Now I'm going to demonstrate now what I talked about uh, in regards to uh, the crosshairs but first of all if you've got a parallax adjustable scope like I have uh, when I'm actually going out and thinking about a range I'm going to shoot so let's say for this distance 55 meters from where I am I turn the scope up to full magnification which it is at the minute on times 12 I will then use the actual parallax and I'll move the side focus on this one until I get a nice uh, clear image at the uh, target end. I'll then move down to a comfortable magnification what I'm going to use uh, and say for this instance here I'm going to use times uh, 7. So at times 7 there uh, I've got for me a nice picture however what you will see is the crosshairs are out of focus. Now I'm going to show you now what I mean about focusing them uh, and twisting this lens. Now the best way to do it uh, is to actually spin the camera one way that's making it worse and then spin it the other way and you can see now hopefully I can the crosshairs are coming into focus uh, and they're just about right there so then I'm going to do is turn the camera around itself like so uh, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to see it when I edit it but now on the screen I've got a really nice uh, clear picture on the screen uh, and the crosshairs are now in focus and I can actually see uh, the mill dots Right for this part of the tutorial I'm going to demonstrate now how uh, pulling this camera module back along the rubber sleeve uh, can actually improve the picture now just to show you that it is uh, the NS50 on here. I'm just going to use a bit of a uh, extra light. I'll turn it on like so, and hopefully you can see that is uh, the actual NS50. Now I'm going to have to keep this live because if I don't, somebody will probably accuse me of uh, fixing it. So I'm going to keep it live like so. You'll see the cameras there and I'm going to move over to the camera uh, in a second uh, and turn it on uh, and try and demonstrate the bit I was telling you. So first of all I'm going to turn on the unit uh, and press record. Now it's recording what you will see is 
even on full power it is quite it is quite dull especially in the actual uh, camera itself actually on the LCD screen it's a little bit brighter uh, but still not as good as I'd want to so even uh, when it's not set up correctly it's still uh, seeing the church what I will do now though is I'm going to hold the scope and I'm going to move it back and hopefully uh, unless my arm's in the way which probably will be you'll be able to see it get brighter there at that location there and again I'll just move it a little bit more just keep playing with it until you get it into a position like so now what we've got as I've explained to you is a full picture uh, and that is very very clear especially uh, on the actual unit uh, LCD screen and that's just by pulling it back so I will now bring this camera back over uh, and you can see it's only probably been two eighths of an inch uh, I've had to move it back but it's actually made a massive difference uh, actually on the picture and I'll just see if I can get a shot through this camera in night uh, night shot mode there and that little bit of difference there made all the difference in the picture What I will do now though is I'm going to try and find something like foliage because I got asked uh, to show foliage because foliage apparently doesn't reflect uh, IR much so I've been told so I will find something around the church at that range and I'm sure we're still going to be able to see uh, the range of 55 metres uh, no problem with this unit set up in the way I've just explained so focusing the lens focusing the crosshair using your parallax if you've got a parallax now I've never tried it without a scope with parallax uh, I'm not actually sure how it would work uh, to this you know to the way I do it uh, maybe that's something you'd have to find out yourself unless your scope is set to infinity uh, and also to move the camera module backwards and forwards until it picks up the right amount of light uh, for uh, actually what the camera needs uh, and doing I think it's like I said the ocular lens so we'll try the foliage a bit now. Right, I'm going to do a little experiment now just to show you how dark it is outside. Uh, you'll notice that both screens are black. Now I'm going to now turn on this handheld handy cam with night shot and put it on night shot mode because at the minute it's in day mode same as the other camera. So I've now just flicked it to night shot. Uh, and it's actually saying night shot on there and you can see no picture this is how dark it is outside I'm going to keep this live though uh, and the way I'm going to prove it you can see now at close range uh, it is picking up the actual screen but if I turn it down to the bottom uh, it's very very faint you can probably maybe make out a picture maybe not anyway I'm going to go back to the screen uh, and I'm just going to flick the camera on now so it's on one click now one click is actually uh, just uh, for using in day without any IR so I'm now recording uh, and on the actual big picture there you can see some sort of picture it's not brilliant but I'm now going to show you as I click up the picture starting to get brighter and brighter and now that's on the full setting and you can see the illuminator now from the actual NS uh, system is enough illumination even for my handy cam uh, if I zoom, uh, try and find the zoom button there we go to zoom in and back out again so this proves to me which is something I knew anyway the actual camera in the NS50 is a lot better than a camera uh, just using night shot so yeah again really clear picture crystal clear actually in the uh, uh, in the actual LCD screen amazing 55 meters so already it's it's uh, beating 
what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to be able to up to 50 uh, yards. Right, what I'm doing now is showing you uh, me recording off the screen again down my garden uh, and you can see the IR uh, is actually if I zoom in you'll see there's a a tree at the bottom of my garden which is around about 25 meters uh, and then across the road near the church hopefully I'll put an hour you'll see uh, some other evergreens and then just off to the right and it's just being picked up there uh, is some trees now these trees are 64 meters now, I'm going to show you I've gone left to the uh, trees just before the church I'm coming down uh, and there is the church but you'll see the actual IR uh, the majority of it is on the trees at the bottom of my garden the trees across the road uh, and then in the distance these trees here now it's these trees here what you're actually looking at uh, on the screen so 64 meters uh, and I'm going to show you, let's grab my torch uh, we've still got the NS50 on, I'm not using the NS200, keep it all live to finish off then before I summarise what I've done now is I've unfocused the camera uh, I've also changed the parallax slightly on the scope and I've pushed the NS200 camera module right forward actually into the scope sleeve uh, and it's still actually aimed where it should be uh, on the trees at 64 meters uh, in the LCD screen I can see there's something moving but I can't really make out what it is uh, can't see the crosshairs in fact it's a real poor picture and this is just goes to show uh, that this is what some people might actually be achieving or their results that they're achieving if they've not done the few simple tips I've explained so you could either have this or this this is back to it being all in focus you can see there's a massive difference and it's just a few simple tips uh, to improve well folks that's it for this little tutorial I hope it's been of some help to some people uh, you can see now hopefully how you can actually vary the degree of actual illumination and picture quality just by using them four or five uh, simple tips I've just give uh, showing that this unit here NS50 uh, is an absolutely staggering little bit of uh, equipment ideal for air rifle hunters Uh, so I'm happy, uh, I'm not going to do any more uh, testing actually ranges I think the little system now has proved itself on a number of occasions only thing I can suggest now if you're still uh, unsure about the stuff you've seen on the channel uh, then get yourself along to one of the night site night uh, demonstration evenings they're posted uh, on the internet and they're all up and down the country uh, and hopefully uh, when they use the same system as I've used you'll see just how good uh, this unit is. So from me and Davey, uh, thanks for watching. We're going to be out hopefully uh, sometime at the end of this week on the golf course again. We'll be using the night sight system and hopefully we'll be getting some rabbits for you. So take care, see you soon and bye for now.